don't aspire to be a nationally distributed craft brand and look at your state's laws that allow you to uh, open multiple locations where you can sell your beer direct to the consumer to control the story and share their passion for what they make. But they also get to keep all the profits, take that tiny little adventurous batch that we got a really good re reception for in our tasting rooms and, and bring it into the 200 barrel system and sell it nationally. I don't think it's the ideal time to try and become a national brand, to really hone your stuff in your home region, prove it out in your own facilities. We know uh, beer will come back again. Thank you so much for watching. Your views and support make these conversations entirely possible. Now, hitting that subscribe button is also transformative to the channel. But oddly, 73% of you have not done so yet. So if you like what you see, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons to fuel our growth, our clout, and our ability to attract even more awesome guests. Thank you and cheers. Sam Calagione, this is awesome to see you. Last time I saw you, we were, we, were, a different, we were on a different hemisphere together. Yes, we are. And it's always gl I'm glad to see you here in North America this time, Yep, uh, right in North Carolina. And this is a huge crowd we've got behind, and, and a lot of it's a result of you. But tell everybody where we are. Well, I don't think this is a result of me. I think it's a result of uh, the vibrancy of a community that I'm proud to be part of with uh, Dogfish Head Brewery, yeah. which is the craft brewing community. So right now on the floor behind Doug and I is the trade show for the North Carolina Craft Brewing Conference. Uh, and um, get to do the keynote uh, talk tomorrow. Yep. Uh, so I'm very proud that Lisa and the board invited me to be part of this. I did it, just did a panel with my friends, Leah from Highlands, Brian from Brian Grossman from Sierra, and a Adam from Highlands. So it's pretty cool to be back here. Well, and, and that was such a great panel. And and there were points there that were a little bit sobering. Uh -huh. uh, Brian Grossman said the next two years, if I'm quoting him correctly, could be rough. He said from an energy point of view, materials point of view, a lot of changes going on. Yep. But as I recall from your story, when, when you started your brewery, brewery, it wasn't such smooth sailing either. And they were tough times. And your culinary focus seems to be maybe not entirely unique, but but you're so focused on it and you've done so well. Tell me how maybe that aspect may lead us through the next few years and go through. Is there an inspiration you have for brewers? Well, I do think Brian uh, Grossman's right. When you think about national distribution for craft breweries, it's a different moment now than when Sierra was coming up and Dogfish was coming up and in that the, the shelf space for craft beer at big national accounts is shrinking as Beyond Beer grows. But yep. beer's been around for 10,000 years. Beyond <laughs> Beer's been around for 10 years. Beer will return to growth. Yep. And moreover, whether it's Adam's example at Highline uh, or, you know, uh, you know, other craft breweries that are, are coming into the market now, there's a new model that I think is very viable and sustainable, which is don't aspire to be a nationally distributed craft brand and look at your state's laws that allow you to uh, open multiple locations where you can sell your beer direct to the consumer. And uh, the North Carolina craft brewers and the guild have done a really good job of making that model viable. I think in North Carolina, you can own like three branded mm -hmm. facilities and ship your beer from one of them where you're brewing it to the other two. So you don't have to invest in the six or seven figure brewing system at every location uh, <laughs> yeah. to get your beer into these uh, other tap room environments where frankly, the, the, the maker of the beer is selling that pint direct to the customer. They get to control the story and share their passion for what they make, but they also get to keep all the profits from selling that beer instead of having to share them with a distributor and a retailer. Let's get back to ingredients, though. You always are coming up with something very novel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just amazing the ingredients that you brewed with. What do you see coming up? Are there any unique ingredients you're going to play with? Oh, uh, let's see. So, um, yes, always. And we're, <laughs> we're really lucky in that at Dogfish, we have a, a one barrel brewery, a five barrel brewery, a seven barrel brewery, a hundred barrel brewery, and a 200 barrel brewing system. So, every you know week at Dogfish, you know, we're painting our 
Renoirs and stuff very carefully <laughs> on the 200 barrel brew system, yeah. system. But then we're throwing shit at the wall on the little systems, <laughs> Jackson Pollock style, and just having fun. And sometimes the stuff sticks on the wall. And we're like, oh, we should take that tiny little adventurous batch that we got yeah. a really good re reception for in our tasting rooms and, and bring it into the 200 barrel system and sell it nationally. So it's really cool because it's like a built in farm system where things can okay. earn their rights. Adventurous, exotic ingredient oriented beers. We'll try them out in our own facilities, hone the recipes, also hone the storytelling, the, the label, uh, you know, a language. And then when something like sequin jail, you know, to do a beer that's three beer styles brewed in sequence, a Kolsch, yeah. a Goza, Berliner Weiss with black limes and lime juice. There's a lot of complexity to the story and the recipe, but we really proved that that is a very refreshing beer style. And it Wonderful. led to it being uh, distributed nationally, even though it's brewed with all these unexpected ingredients. So is there a single ingredient you're kind of optimistic about? I'm, I'm real interested what recipes you're playing with or what, what styles you think yeah. you're, you're going to throw at the wall, as you said, yeah. in your small barrel system. Uh, well, one that I'm having a lot of fun with lately is uh, sage, uh, which uh, is uh, we found a specific farm in, in California that makes a, a, that grows a white sage that's just amazingly intense. Uh, and you can get amazing flavors where it's very like, piney and foresty character yeah, coming right. from the sage yeah. so it actually marries up well to certain hop varieties that have those same characteristics so next week we're releasing a uh, sage infused whiskey cocktail from our distillery okay and uh we worked with a company in california that actually makes uh perfumes they go out in the woods of california and they <laughs> distill sage and juniper and so we're going to make a uh, whiskey with that and then with the whiskey barrels we sent to them they're going to make a dogfish perfume or cologne uh using our empty barrels so it's a, a circle of life for 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 the wooden barrels so that's one that we're really excited about and we have a beer coming out uh th that we're still working on getting the name legal that's also a sage infused ipa that we're excited about has anybody ever done that before? A, a, co a co collab with a perfume company? No, I think we're the first <laughs> uh, beverage company to do a branded cologne, and it's one that we're we're make, made you know with our own distillate yeah. from our distillery and with the with the distilled herbs from the West Coast. So those are the kind of projects now that it's not going to scale, Doug. It's not going to be the next 60 wow. minute sold coast to coast, but they're super fun projects where we can learn really at a molecular level how yeah. different culinary ingredients work with each other, work with distilled spirits, work with beer. So it's a, a wonderful learning experience. That, that perfume worries me, though. I can remember coming home and my mother telling me I smelled like a brewery. <laughs> yeah, now if you come home, you can say, no, I put it on my clothes. It's, I swear, it's cologne. I'm not drunk. <laughs> well, as you look forward to the next two years, what do you think is going to get through these troublesome years that Brian was describing? Is there any? We, we talked about ingredients and we've kind of talked about strategy. But what do you, yeah. what do you think it's going to really take? Well, I mean, there's as many different models for building a successful craft brewery in America as there is unique beers to be brewed in America. Yep. So uh, uh, smart entrepreneurs are going to figure out a way forward. Um, I would say right now, kind of, if you're not over 20,000 barrels and, and you're not distributing your beer in more than three or four states, I don't think it's the ideal time to try and become a national brand, right. to really hone your stuff in your home region, prove it out yep. in your own facilities, I think is the right thing to do right now. That said, there's always like a hot shit cult brewery that is keep blowing up on the internet and people are waiting outside to get their beers and there's unique opportunities for those, but they're more the exception to the rule, I think in this moment. Uh, and that will, again, will change, but you know, I'm not, horribly concerned about the last two years because we've lived through the last 29 years of ups and downs <laughs> at, at Dogfish and uh, we know uh, beer will come back again. Well, Sam, I know you do a lot of fun things. I've seen videos with your biking and then your, your sports that you do. What, what do you love in the most right now? Is there any one thing that just really gets you up in the morning that is exciting? 
besides your brewery? Yeah. Well, I mean, I try every day to earn my beer calories by going for a one hour either paddle board because I live right on the Atlantic okay. in coastal Delaware or a one hour bike ride through our state park along the Atlantic Ocean. And we have a beer themed hotel, the Dogfish Inn. Yeah. Yeah. 17 room boutique hotel with a rallying cry written across the fireplaces. Welcome to Lewis, Mother Nature. Let's do this. Because the town is Lewis, <laughs> Delaware, but the okay. hotel is all about getting people out into Mother Nature. I've, I've got to do that. That's not a far drive. It's only from the like Carolinas. yeah, I think it's only like six hours from here, in yeah. North Carolina. But uh, and Dogfish helped to underwrite uh, a, a network of, of bike trails between the three towns where our locations are, oh. and then we also helped to underwrite a network of docks so you can kayak or paddleboard to our different locations in the different towns. Or uh, get on a bike, and we collaborate with a, a bike company. So we have regular bikes and electric bikes at our group at our at our hotel. So that's what I love doing is being out in the beauty of Mother Nature on my way to or on my way back from enjoying good beers with friends. <laughs> well, speaking of good beers and friends, I think we've got some folks down there we want to go see. Uh, but this was fantastic. It was great to see you in the U.S. I hope sometime to get up to the brewery. Yeah, it's only, only six hours away. I invite yep. your your uh, viewers to check out yep. dogfish.com so you can find out all about our hotel, our different restaurants, our brewery, our distillery, and come pay us a visit. We're not too far away. Thank you for coming to the Carolinas, Sam. It's good Cheers. to be here, Doug. Good seeing you again. Cheers. Cheers. I want to know what you think about Sam's emphasis on culinary ingredients. And if you found any value in this video, please smash that like button. It supports us in creating more content like this. And check out these videos on the screen. They've been carefully selected just for you, and they're filled with even more brewing insights and tips. Thank you so much, and cheers!